This is a CBC Podcast. Well, Prince George takes center stage in a discussion about the national art scene today. Following Creative Paths is an online forum led by the Toronto-based Arts Unite, and it will feature a variety of Prince George musicians, artists, and dancers talking about how they thrive outside of a major urban centre. The event is moderated by Thea Fitzjames, who I have reached in Ontario this morning. Hi there, Thea. Are you there, Thea? I hope I haven't lost Thea. And Sean Farrell, are you there? I am here. Okay, excellent. I'm glad to hear that. Director of Studio 2880 in Prince George. Uh, Sean, let's begin with you. How did this come about? Well, it's been a really interesting journey in how this came about. I'll go back a couple of years when it was the Community Arts Council's 50th anniversary in 2018. In part of the uh, kind of assortment of celebrations that we were looking at, we wanted to make a video. And at first we were not really thinking out of the box. We thought, well, maybe a little video that talks about the 50 years of the organization. But what we really came to understand was Prince George has a long history of having arts and culture as core building blocks around community. Arts and culture in this city, in spite of some people thinking, well, it's impossible for Prince George to have a thriving arts and culture, but in fact, not only do we have a thriving arts and culture community, but it is, it is centerfold in ideas around community development, um, healing, reconciliation. So we decided with the 50th anniversary video to talk about that, and we created a video called Creative Path, uh, Artistic Journeys in a Northern Community. And that video got noticed by the Arts Unite organization in Toronto, and they thought, well, this would be a really good platform for a national discussion on the differences and similarities between developing a cultural scene in a large urban center and how that also looks in a smaller or even remote community. Mm. And Sean, you have experiences in in both of those worlds as uh, as somebody who lives in Prince George but moved from Toronto. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about what you have learned about some of those similarities and differences. Well, you know, when I first came to Prince George in 2016 and I became the executive director of the Arts Council, it was kind of a post-retirement job and I thought, well, a nice little arts council with a beautiful little gallery and, and, and gift shop. But right away, I found that arts and culture were always being invited to the table on really big, important municipal and regional discussions. And as I mentioned earlier, there was always an invitation for arts and culture to be there when we're talking about healthy communities, when we're talking about Uh, social issues, particularly in the downtown area of Prince George, um, the reducing criminal stats. And I thought, well, this is really interesting because I don't think I've ever seen that happen on such a consistent scale in large urban centers. But yet it seemed arts and culture was brought into those really important conversations. And so what I thought was going to be a quiet, part-time post-retirement job, like I haven't stopped in five years, just because there's such a hunger, there's such a thirst in this community to see arts and culture play a leadership role in these <clears throat> in these ideas around community development. And one of the the, the, the compelling parts of this, we've, we've talked about how uh, a lot of people are reconsidering their lives in larger centres and instead looking to places like Prince George or Prince Rupert uh, to live, whether it be for work or for art. And I wanted to talk a, a little bit about how COVID-19 is changing the conversation around the art scene. For example, this forum that's taking place is entirely online, and that means that uh, Unlike many other opportunities like this, people can take part from right across the country, whether you're in Prince George, in Dees Lake, Haida Gwaii. Sean, how does this change the opportunities for where an artist is located? Well, I'll give you an example that we've seen with one of our well-known local guilds. And so they would usually have a weekly drop-in for members and for, you know, potential new members. And so they move that, of course, to an online 
uh, platform throughout the year. And now they actually have paying members of their guilds right down through the United States and even into South America. That's just fascinating. A local guild in northern British Columbia now has, now has members throughout the entire Western ha- Hemisphere. It's absolutely fa- fantastic to see, especially the, the knowledge and the knowledge sharing and the knowledge keeping that, hel- that is held in a guild format, to see that being disseminated now on, a, on an almost global level. This is all a result of, of moving online to COVID-19. So that's just one of many examples that I can think of. And it's just, again, I find it absolutely fascinating. And uh, I, it... it it's worth mentioning the fact that uh, we're talking about rural and urban, but Prince George doesn't identify itself as, as a rural community. Can you tell me a little bit uh, about that? Some of that, uh, not conflict exactly, but just a, a need to put Prince George out there as, as uh, something that is a major contender when it comes to arts. Well, I, I'll, I'll share with you a kind of a personal anecdote. Of course, growing up and living in Toronto for most of my adult life, you know, there is always this sense of, well, British Columbia is there, but, you know, it's on the other side of the Rocky Mountains. And does anybody really know what happens in British Columbia? And then when I moved to British Columbia, I found what an interesting place this is. And even in doing business, I learned a completely new kind of business culture that wasn't so much about the bottom line and the best price, but there is this sense of, Let's work for consensus. Let's take time before we make major decisions <clears throat> to look at things like inclusivity, et cetera. And I, when I first came to BC, people were saying, well, you've got to slow down. I'm like, well, time is money. Time is money. It's like, well, maybe it's not. So that was the first kind of experience for me. And then again, here in Prince George, this incredible arts and culture community that has been forged by by many people who were from here, but many people who also came here, and they came here for opportunity. And I think when we talk about even just new, new residents to Prince George who are coming from larger urban centers, the easy answer is, well, property is more affordable, you know, it's, 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 there's, it's safe for families, et cetera. But I think it's really about community opportunities to get involved in so many opportunities to, to help with the community, volunteerism. And I always joke to my, to my family back in Ontario, I say, everything in Prince George is 12 minutes away. And when you're not spending an hour and a half every single day stuck in a freeway commuting, that extra hmm. time adds to an, like, this quality of life piece. Hmm. Well, it's uh, really great to speak with you about it this morning, Sean. Thank you very much for joining me on the program today. My pleasure. Thank you. Sean Farrell is the executive director of Prince George's Studio 2880. We had hoped to also talk to Thea Fitzjames, the program manager with Arts Unite. She seems to be having some issues with her phone line, but both of them will be taking part in following Creative Paths, recentering Northern artistic life. That takes place later today. There's a free online forum happening at 10 o'clock this morning, Pacific time. You can find out more by going to the website, visiting artsunite.ca. For more CBC Podcasts, go to cbc.ca slash podcasts.